This podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Visit the Tech Podcast Network at www.techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here. Welcome to Calcast, your creator. Episode 27. Welcome, CalCast listeners, to another episode of CalCast, the podcast about how God is using new media and technology for missions today. I'm Cal Curtis, your host, here to bring you the latest in gospel gadgets and technology for finishing the task of world evangelization. This podcast is proudly listed at podcastpickle.com. We hope you enjoyed the first part of our discussion on the Internet and other technologies and how they can be used to reach the world for Christ. We are doing now part two of that discussion over Skype. Uh, We just want to again uh, apologize for the sound quality when it was recorded. There were a few pops and spits and sputters that you often have uh, when you're doing an audio Skype connection. Uh, One of us was two, two were in Europe and one in Australia. Uh, And so it was quite a distance away uh, to be doing this uh, discussion, this interview. But I think it turned out good enough that you can capture uh, some of the interesting ideas of how media, uh, particularly the internet, can be used by the Lord to reach the world for Christ. There's tremendous potential there, tremendous potential there. And this fits right into the theme of CalCast, uh, where we try to bring to you all the latest technology and all the latest gadgetry that can be used for God's work to complete the task of reaching the world for Christ. We often call this world evangelization, sharing the gospel message, the plan of Christ for salvation for every human being on the planet. And it uh, doesn't matter what country or what people group or what language group you come from, God loves you and He has a wonderful plan for your life. And that starts with being in relationship with Him, having your sins forgiven. This is what we're all about here at CalCast, wanting to inform our listeners about what are the different methods that can be used, the the new methods and new media that can be used to reach people for Christ. You know, gone are the days of getting on on board the ship and six months later you make it to your destination as a missionary. Nowadays with new technology in terms of transportation and communications and personal media players and all of these kinds of things, have really made it a whole brand new day and really a new game in terms of world missions. And so we need to be on top of this as missionaries, as churches, as mission leaders, so that we know what are the best ways, means, and tools to use to reach the world for Christ. We have a big challenge ahead of us, but we have a tremendous potential mission for us that's coming up, and they're ready to use this technology to reach the world, so we need to be ready as well. So let's get into the second part of this discussion on IT and God's work. One of our sponsors is GoDaddy.com, and GoDaddy.com has just recently told us that we could give you a special deal. If you click on the GoDaddy.com icon on our website and go to GoDaddy.com, anything that you purchase there, you can get a 10% discount if you put our promo code in there. Our promo code is CJC, and then the word SAVE, and the number 10. Again, 
That's C J C S A V E and the number 10. And then you'll get 10% discount off of anything that you order through GoDaddy.com. Visit GoDaddy.com today and get all of your internet needs taken care of. I think that um, this is something that I've um, that I've thought about for the last f- number of years, and, um, um, and, and you know, in Jesus' words, um, I believe it. Yeah, I believe it was Jesus that said, um, "What has uh, been whispered in the house will be shouted from the rooftops." Mm. Um, and it seems to me like there was just a principle. Um, you know, if I can draw this this far, maybe I'm going too far, but there's a principle about information that information just wants to get out and it will find okay. a way to get yeah. uh, where it needs to go and, I, and I'm sure that God's just put that as a law you know in the universe that this information will get to where it needs to go and and it's obviously has a big advantage for the gospel you know but um, well it says your sin will find you out so <laughs> that too yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right well I you know I see the internet really as a medium um, you know it contains or it's a channel for truth or you know information and certainly yeah. truth but it's it's like i liken it to light you know uh l i h g h t sorry light um yeah. where light exposes the darkness and uh, the internet is basically all about electrons flying back and forth and i see this basically as light and god is using that light to expose the darkness throughout yeah. the world, and where that, where that's able to go freely, mm-hmm. you know, I think, you know, truth is shown and and non-truth is exposed. Yeah. So, um, you yeah. know, I think it's a pretty cool thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's definitely something that God's developed, and of course, everything that, you know, that uh, gets developed, you know, the devil tries to use it uh, in a wrong way, and people do as well. Mm. But still, I think um, I really see it as the modern Romans road. Uh, I mm, yeah. I don't know if you uh, guys um, have studied much of the early church history, but one of the things that caused the early church to grow so rapidly was the fact that they utilized the roads that the mm. Romans had built wow. throughout right. the known world at that time to be able to go quickly from one city to another mm. uh, yeah. and basically following the same routes as the as the merchants did. Mm-hmm. And so that this was all prepared for them. They were able to spread the gospel very quickly that way. And I see uh, the Internet as the modern Romans road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, That we can use it as a road, as a pathway to get into places where we couldn't otherwise go and yeah. we can spread the gospel much faster than we ever could before as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of a Pax Romana or something, <laughs> Pax Internet, <laughs> or you, would, or you would say that in uh, Latin. But uh, yeah, I'm, that's really good. I'm curious about something. You know, sometimes I do some searches. I mean, I'm I'm actually uh, very good at finding things on the Internet. But... Uh, since there's so many of these different, uh, you know, different uh, communities on, you know, online communities that are available that are not searchable, how can you, you know, how can you even discover where people are? Yeah, that's, well, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, you're talking about MySpace and Facebook and things like that, right? Yeah, I mean, because they're not interconnected, so there's no sharing of information between these communities. But so how how... How would you even know where to look? Well, it depends on how bold you want to be, but I, I do know that at least with Facebook, you can do searches for people, and when you do, uh, options will come up. Uh-huh. Uh, different options will come up, and uh, I know their searching mechanism is terrible because it's <laughs> I almost never get the people that I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe, two, <laughs> maybe 200 people come up, and you know it's really yeah. difficult to do it, but... Yeah, but, I mean that's one way, and you can click on some people are you know have opened their, you know their MySpace or mm-hmm. Facebook to a public kind of search, and others have it very private. So mm-hmm. I mean, I I actually think that it's better in those cases rather than doing a search and just kind of a, a hit and miss kind of strategy. 
is that you 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 know you do what you know the apostle Paul and others other effective evangelists did. They just work through networks of relationship. Uh-huh. And so one cool thing about MySpace is that when you click on one of your friends and go to their space, you see all of their friends. Right. And then you can click on one of their friends and go to all of their friends. Right. And right. so there's there's a relationship connection there. There's mm-hmm. a web that you can actually go through and uh and find people. Mm-hmm. Uh and in fact I have shared a bit with my um my wife's uh nephew who who is a very needy <laughs> young kid Mm -hmm. and you know i've not done it really heavy preaching or anything like that but just kind of soft sell uh relationship building and then i see he's got a bunch of friends you know and and you know uh, i could probably talk to them and say oh yeah this is my nephew and Uh you know so you just kind of go through relationships like that and often if people i think if people know that you know one of their friends Mm -hmm. it's a lot a lot easier open door to then be able to mm-hmm. share with them mm-hmm. right yeah of course you might want to get your friend's permission to do that yeah yeah but, um and yeah. you know one of the things that um that i was looking at is uh you know how do you how do you break into it you know and i think that's kind of what chris touched on is you know he was talking about um, how to find people you know, how do you find networks um and it almost you know you've got this whole viral video thing that's that happens you know on youtube and stuff and where it almost just seems like a chain reaction you know um yeah but um what you know what are some of your i know you have um, a couple of podcasts what what are some of your thoughts on yeah this? i have three podcasts um yeah i've got three podcasts i've got one that's for our ministry creator and national podcast we call it cowcast okay and um we also have another one that specifically well that one talks a lot about um how God is using media and the arts in missions. Okay. And uh, the other one we have is called God Network News, or GNN for short. And that one is uh, talking about what God's doing around the world, especially in the unreached world, just uh, testimonies and stories of missionaries and Muslims and Hindus getting saved and all kinds of things like that, anything related to that. So it's sort of the opposite end of what I call crisis network news, CNN, uh, and it's God's perspective. Yeah, yeah, it's giving God's perspective on what's going on because we've been so inundated, you know, so brainwashed by CNN uh-huh. uh, that, you know, we think that the whole world is going to hell, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, we miss all of the positive stories and things of what God is mm-hmm. doing. So I'm trying to kind of you know, uh, balance that out a little bit more and bring that forth. And then I have another one that's a fun one that actually has probably my most subscribers, and that's Kitty Cat Cast. Nice. Which is basically, <laughs> uh, it's a podcast about, po- it's a it's a audio and a vidcast uh, just on cats in general and uh, people who love cats. So, uh, yeah, so those are the three that I have. And you asked the question, uh, Rodney, that, was a good question, and that is, how do you get into this? I'd say it's so easy to get into podcasting these days, whether it's audio or video. Certainly audio is simple. I actually, when I teach on this subject, I take my little handheld digital audio recorder with me, Mm -hmm. and in 15 minutes, I take the students through actually creating, recording an interview like a podcast, going on to a free podcast, uh, you know, service provider, uploading it, uh, writing a little show notes thing and publishing it and then downloading it on iTunes on their computers all in about 15 minutes. Oh, sweet. And I just show them how simple it is, how easy it is to get started. But really, the first thing you need to do, the most important thing, you know, they say in, in the in the podcasting and other radio broadcasting world is that content is king. And so uh, what you want to do is come up with a very creative kind of new approach to yeah. something, some mm-hmm. subject. And um, when you find that, then, you know, once you've got that, then the rest is really easy. It's really easy to get into. Okay. Uh, cool. Have you... Hmm. I hate it when my brain stumbles. Um, 
<laughs> this Mine is does that all the time. <laughs> I just I don't know if this is related or if this is going to go off too much of a tangent, but um, you know, we talked about internet evangelism training, and uh, you know, yeah. there's a guy that works for you, Stefan. And uh, he and I had talked briefly about creating some kind of a seminar or something that would deal with um, maybe website design and programming. Um, maybe there's a, a way that there could be something that would that would kind of entail all of those things, like you know, web design, web programming, but also podcasting and maybe internet evangelism, and uh, you know, using those kind of technologies. Yeah, I think there's two two kind of things that we're talking about here that I at one time thought they were the same thing, but actually, as I've gotten to know IT people more, because I'm more of a media person, uh-huh. uh, I, I, I dabble in IT, but um, I've started to see that there really is kind of two different things that we're, we're looking at here. Uh, one basically is web evangelism that anyone can be involved in. Sure. Uh, and you know, you know, no matter what their background is, IT is kind of a specialized area. Yeah, and yeah. it's actually a special kind of people that are involved in IT and that are are, are what we call IT people. Um, there really almost needs to be a different kind of training mm-hmm. uh, for them because many uh, many IT people have have been told or, you know, either directly or indirectly that really there's no place for them in yeah. missions. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's something that, you know, they need to be encouraged that there are so many things that they are so valuable and so needed for for missions to get the word out, you know. Um, and there's so many areas that they can be involved in, and, and web evangelism is just one of those areas. So... Yeah. Um, I, I would actually like to see, you know, an IT school that's a separate thing from a web evangelism yeah, training okay. kind of program. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you but, could mix a little bit of web evangelism in there. I think it's good because yeah. just to, yeah. to, you know, give them the idea that they need to be thinking uh, of ways that different aspects of IT can be used for missions, you know. Wouldn't yeah. it seem that the the like let's let's create some terms wouldn't it seem like the internet evangelist and the IT missionary would be a, a natural team yeah i think so i think they would i don't think they're the exact they're, they're not ne- i would say that uh, a web evangelist might not be an IT person right but uh, i would i would certainly want every IT person to be a web evangelist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too confusing. But No, um, I understand because there are very different. I understand what you're saying, and they are very different. Uh, I would consider myself much more of an IT person than an evangelist. Uh-huh. In this yeah. context. And that, yeah, and that's fine. And, um, you know, I guess that's also, you know, there's the issue of what are, you, you know, what are your personal giftings and and motivations you know are you more of an evangelist or more of a teacher or a disciple or right. whatever you know um yeah. uh and i i tend to think that that many it people are are teachers a lot at heart uh-huh. possibly prophetic as well yeah i a number of it people i've met have been extremely prophetic and stefan is one of them yeah, and you don't have to talk with him too long to figure out this guy. When he talks to you, man, it's straight. You know, there's no mm, beating around the bush. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, he, his whole personality is quite prophetic. Well, we'd like to interview um, him sometime as well. You'd yeah, mentioned. that would be wonderful. Yeah, he he would be great. You know, that's interesting that you mentioned that, Calvin, because um, I uh, I also have a prophetic gifting, um, and Chris and I have talked about. Um, those of us in IT who also are gifted in uh, in worship worship, yeah. worship leading, um, but I've noticed that about IT people is that they often tend to be, uh, like you say, very direct, very uh, you know, just what you what you get kind of uh, mm-hmm. kind of people. That's interesting that yeah, you put it in those right. terms. I had never thought about it that way. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they tend to be more concrete, uh, you know, in their thinking. I think, and and just in their relationships very straightforward and that's good i mean we need that in in ywam um i 
they they also tend to be people that um, you know are not real upfront leader types. Although I'm sure that there's some you know that are you know yeah. that have that. Yeah. They they don't always have a speaking gift, so to speak. Um, right. But they have a thinking gift, you know. I mean, and and relating to people gifts. So it's something we really need a lot more in our mission and in all missions. I think. Right. Um, you probably know Chung Ho. Yeah. He's a, a Korean American guy that's one of our leaders in Kona, mm-hmm. who he is extremely prophetic. I mean, if mm-hmm. you get a chance to hear him, I, I know Chris, you and I at CRIT, yeah. when we were at the CRIT yeah. meeting, we heard him. He's very prophetic, mm-hmm. very uh, dynamic, uh, anointed guy. He does have a, a speaking gift, but I think specifically for him, it's because God is calling him to call forth yeah, a yeah. whole generation of IT people. Yes. And he's beginning cool. to do that. We're beginning to see that. Yeah, he so just we really ran, need to pray. That. He just ran uh, his first uh, global communications IT focused DTS. Uh, yeah, I got to teach at it for Did a you? week. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, he didn't see the, the response to his first school that he had hoped, but, I mean, any new school, it takes a little bit sure. of time sure. to build up the numbers. But, uh, yeah, we need to see, you know, that grow in our how many, a lot. How many students did he have? I think there was about 30 students altogether, something really? like that. Really? Yeah, he, yeah, and he was hoping for a lot more than that. Some of them weren't completely focused on IT. I see. Um and um, that's just a phenomenon you have in Kona there, you know. Uh, there's yeah. some spillover from other schools. But, um, you know, he had a core of people, certainly, that were very interested in, in IT and wanting to see it used for missions. We really need to see IT people recognize that they have a really important role yeah. to, to play in missions today. And, you know, it's just yeah. like, uh, it's interesting because I think uh, God has raised my wife and I up sort of as, as a prophetic voice to the media uh, folks who don't always see their place in missions as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. You know, for many, many years, the only thing that a media person could do is, you know, the latest brochure for the base or sure. something like that. Yeah, but right. they didn't, they have not realized, I think, until the last few years that there's a really important uh, part for them to play and actually reaching out to mm-hmm. unreached peoples, really, you know, really being there directly, re, uh, you mm-hmm. know, sharing the gospel through their giftings to, to people who have never heard of Jesus. And so that's a fairly new thing that's just mm-hmm. started to come to the front um, in the last few years. And I think with IT people, we're, we're going to see the same thing happening. Uh, they're going to get that mm-hmm. revelation and they're going to start coming in to missions. Well, that's kind uh, of... I, I, by the thousands. That's kind of my awesome. hope. One of my hopes for this podcast, you know, is that people, you know, these IT guys specifically will start listening to it and and realize, you know, how much uh, they're needed and how much God is, is already using them just by simply, you know, coming in and redesigning a website. It seems like, oh, it's just no big deal. But you radically change the face of of the YWAM ministry that you're making this website for to the rest of the world. Absolutely. I mean, we, we had an IT guy come. He wasn't even a YWAMer. He was going through university. He did an internship with us for six months and he was a PHP brainiac. He he really knew his stuff. And that's what his, you know, his master's degree work was in. And he, he just came and he created the Creator National website that you see today. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's beautiful. It's Flash. It's yeah. PHP. It's, you know, database driven. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. that has really literally revolutionized our ministry. Awesome. And helped us to distribute more of our, our you know, media tools. In fact, this past year, which is the first full year we had that new website, we have distributed more than twice as many resources as ever before. Wow! And and this is exactly what you're saying. The IT people can 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 enhance mission efforts all over the world, and you know they don't realize I think the potential that's there. The other thing is that they have a tremendous ability to speak prophetically into people's lives, and uh, you know our guy Stefan that's with us. Um, 
you know, he's one of the guys that st- that stands out when when I think of, you know, um, you know, when we're in worship or seeking God or in prayer or intercession, mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. it is, he's always the one that that gets the word of the Lord and speaks it out and. And often we end up, it ends up shooting us in the direction God wants us to go in prayer or ministry, whatever it is. And so there, you know, uh, there are so many ways that God wants to use IT people, not just putting together a network or something. Right. Thank you, Calvin, for taking the time there in Australia. Yeah.